Hey everyone, so we're back from PAX and I got this in the mail. This is not something I requested. This is an MSI Seahawk X, I believe. Yes, it is a Seahawk EK card. So the EK part is because it is an EK water blocks, water block on here and that's very reflective. So I'll try not to point at the camera too much. But basically we, we don't have a wet bench right now. We don't have an open loop bench to test this thing and frankly just don't have the time budget to do that right now. So we're gonna tear it down, just kind of look at it and see what it looks like internally because I haven't seen that done a lot yet. And uh, then it will probably go back to MSI because I we just there's a million other things to test post pack. So this is the card. It is clocked at 1847 megahertz. It's a custom PCB MSI board for the 1080 and then it's using an EK kit uh, so you've got the sort of acrylic housing here. The liquid goes in on this side, out on this side if you want to set it up that way. That's kind of the recommended setup. So it goes in through this channel around here and out. And it is a full coverage block, which means it's actually covering all of the hot spots on the board. That includes the GPU itself, which is sort of under this area here and then the VRM, which will be more over here. The PWM is also covered with this block. So this is a bit different than an AIO solution. So an AIO solution like the EVGA Hybrid or the Hydro Graphics or Seahawk liquid cooled card without an open loop solution, those use a CLC that just covers the GPU and the, ex the, the one exception being the EVGA Hybrid where they have that copper plate on the VRAM and stuff like that, which we talked about in our review and our teardown of that card. But the idea on the whole is that this solution will cover the whole card and so you get a bit better, uh, potentially a bit better thermal dissipation. But of course, because more of the card is covered, the temperature shown for the GPU will actually appear somewhat higher and that's because the liquid temperature is higher than if you're just cooling the GPU only and nothing else. Almost all. Okay, so 11 screws to take off the back plate. There's your back plate. Really nothing, uh, nothing special there. So back plate held by 11 screws. I think we just used an A1 head to remove those. We don't need these on here, so let's get rid of that. So there's the back of the PCB. GPU is obviously right there, and the GPU, uh, the actual part that's mounting over it, right, is secured by these four screws. So that, that's your sort of core heatsink mounting uh, tension right there. And then the rest of it is going to be secured through these uh, Allen key heads. I think we can kind of just take these out, I'm not sure. So four screws for tensioning the uh, block itself. Just put my hand right on a thermal pad. Four screws for tensioning the block itself to the unit. This is the liquid cooling block completely separated from the PCB. Obviously, this is the part that's going uh, contacting the GPU directly. So there's your silicon contact, pretty much perfect with the thermal paste spread. Uh, a couple of these thermal pads did get left on the board but that doesn't really matter. So uh, th thermal pads for covering the VRAM modules, these are actually high quality conductive thermal pads. Big pad right here for the MOSFETs and the capacitor bank. And you may notice that there's actually a very slight uh, inward sort of bezel right here. And that's where the chokes go. So the chokes don't need to be directly cooled. There is a bit of air channeling over here. There's not really air flow, but because chokes or inductors are sort of uh, cooled by default just by these little heat sinks they have on them and because they can go up to 120 plus Celsius, there's no real reason to put them under liquid. 
they'll just kind of increase the liquid temperature without a, an actual benefit other than increasing the temperature of the rest of the component. All right, so the benefit here is basically that they've given you everything pre-applied so you don't have to install this yourself, which is often the case. EK has done some QC here. You can see they've done leak testing already. I'm not sure if that's showing up, but it says leak tested, quality control passed. So in theory, it should not leak out of the box. Certainly not something you want. But that's the block. Moving to the card, we can look at the PCB now. We've got the uh, GPU here. So this is the GP104 GPU for GTX 1080 cards. And VRAM modules here as provided by Micron. These are GDDR5X, as all GTX 1080s will be. This is actually covered by the block. Uh, so it's really not something not accessible, not something you'll use. But um, that that's just either it's a header for uh, either a debug jumper or for a fan. Then we've got more over here. There's an LED header as well. But that's just probably left mostly leftovers on the card because it is a reused PCB. Chokes, also known as inductors, right here. High quality SFC chokes, capacitor bank, and then the FETs are all right here. Let's see, where are these? So for the MOSFETs, very small text, can't really see it, but it's using M3816N MOSFETs, which you can learn more about these in our EVGA FTW PCB analysis, where Buildzoid talks a bit about different types of MOSFETs. Uh, so we do cover some of that there, but that's what it's using for this card. And it is set up as a Yes, yeah, so a 10 phase setup on the PCB and uh, the rest is pretty standard. But very large PCB with a large block to go on it. The liquid, if you wanted to buy one of these, see the, the problem we have is that we just don't have a wet bench set up right now. And that's because to use one of these, if you're not familiar with them, you would need an open loop liquid cooling solution set up on your system. So uh, this connects to your open loop solution that's already in the computer. One thing we are looking at is the new EK Predator. So I do actually have one of those. We will be testing it thermally and FPS and all that. But the way that's set up is it's an EK radiator with sort of a QRC valve for the, the tube. So it's, tech, it's sort of an AIO, it's sort of a closed loop system, but it's got these quick disconnects that we've shown with PNY several years ago and with EVGA at CES this year. So those QRC valves, they can be disconnected and they don't leak because they've got a uh, spring tension in there to basically close, a, sort of close a trap door and prevent leakage. And that can be connected to other quick release valve radiators. So you could actually create a sort of fake open loop cooling solution for the CPU and the GPU, you would use a block similar to this, but not quite the same. But the idea is similar, except it's pre-filled with liquid. This does not have any liquid in it, if you have not noticed. That's because the idea of this is you're meant to fill it with your own, with your own open loop. But the EK Predator setup is actually pretty new. The way it's set up, it could either be completely pointless or pretty cool. So we will be testing that one, but I did want to take this one apart just because it was kind of a different card. We won't be testing it. MSI sent it. I said, hey, we don't have a wet bench. Uh, can you give me a shipping label? I'll send it back to you. And they're like, can you, can you take it apart? So that's, that's what we did. Uh, it, it, was, it was worth pulling apart, but very easy to do, obviously. So if you wanted to do this, it's 11 screws for the back plate and then four for the block. You don't have to take off the back plate to get the block off. You can just take off the four. Uh, if you wanted to expose the PCB for whatever reason, maybe to shunt, short the shunts for a mod uh, for overclocking or something like that. Those are all very rapidly exposed. We've got a couple shunts here. Um, very easy to do. So that's all for this video. As always, Patreon link the post troll video to help us out directly. Links in the description below for more information. Stay tuned for our uh, gigabyte coverage of the liquid cooled gigabyte card. And I am still sick from PAX, so thanks for watching this far. I'll see you all next time.